Good morning and welcome to Morning Java brought to you by our friends at Get-Go Cafe and Market where for a limited time you can get two breakfast croissants for six dollars. Yeah, two for six or just the regular breakfast combo. If you want hash browns coffee with your breakfast sandwich, three ninety nine. That'll get you filled up. It is Pitt's opening week of football. And the yeah. fact that they're playing Albany obviously isn't exciting, to say the least. Mm -hmm. However, however, seeing the Pat Narduzzi defense against anybody, yes, anybody, mm -hmm. during his tenure has tended to be an unfortunate adventure for the most <laughs> part. And at what point are we going to start seeing the fruits of acquiring this elite defensive coach which is why they brought Pat Narduzzi to Pittsburgh. Well, I mean, it starts with the secondary, really. I mean, it, it, coaches it will sure always has. say it starts up front, but the, the, area that, he that needs, too. the area that needs to be repaired, I should say, is the secondary where, you know, the Panthers were ranked middle of the road in the nation but near the bottom half of the ACC last year. I mean, it, it's just, you know, too many big plays given up. They gave up, you know, 300-yard receivers against Oklahoma State. You know, just it, it's been bad. The big move this year is they're trying to upgrade the athleticism there with new guys. They're yeah, trying to plug guys in. Symptomatic. You've got Damari Mathis moving into the starting lineup. That that was a real surprise when they put out their first depth chart. You've got a, you know a true sophomore getting thrown in there. But are you, know, you really against, upgrading either athletically or experience-wise well, over Jordan Whitehead and Avante Maddox? Well, I don't Jordan, know. I mean, Jordan Whitehead was a safety, so that's that's Still, one. Still, he's in the secondary. But yes, I mean, Mathis, I think, is an athletic upgrade over Maddox. You know, he's maybe not quite as fast, but he's got a 40 inch vertical leap. You know, he's, he's five foot it 11, still feels so he's, he, he can match up with bigger guys than what Maddox could. Having I, athletic guys back there, though, doesn't solve the main issue, which is that he leaves them in isolation. Well, but if you're going to do that, and the scheme's not going to change. I mean, no, that's, it's that's not. What, he's and, made and, that and clear. And defensive coordinator Randy Bates said as much, too, that, I mean, those guys are going to be. Rely All upon. alone. So, you know, put a guy that's 5'11 and can get up in the air to match up with these big receivers. You've got a better shot. No knock on Avante Maddox, but he was overmatched by some of these big guys. And every time I've brought up this issue mm -hmm. with Coach Narduzzi, I've gotten the same response, and that is it's got to start with a pass rush. It's got to start up front. Um, to me, that's a little bit of a cop-out for a scheme that has not worked. However, it's his team. He's the coach. It's certainly his defense, regardless of who's the coordinator. Mm -hmm. And how is that aspect of it going to unfold? Where's the pass rush going to come from? Well, the pass rush, they're hoping, again, another sophomore red shirt in this case, you know, Rashad Weaver is the guy that they are really thinking is going to make a step up. You can see just physically he's gotten stronger. You know, he's a big pass rush looking guy, 6'5", about 250 pounds. Uh, Dwayne Hendricks, if he can stay healthy, is a guy that, you know, transferred in a couple of years ago. You know, but they should have two good bookend ends starting there. If they if they can stay on the field, create havoc. You know, it's going to take some of the pressure off there. And I mean, look, you can't fault Narduzzi for not wanting to move his scheme because it worked so oh, well at Michigan oh, State. Oh, I, I definitely but, but, can fault well, him when it doesn't work in Pittsburgh. Well, that's true. <laughs> you but, know? I mean, you, but it, it, all it, good it coaches work, yeah. and managers always they adjust the schemes to the talent at hand, and. Uh, you can't just come here and say, this is my scheme, and all of you just need to adapt. Well, ad adjustments are one thing, and certainly, you know, in-game, you know, there are places where moves need to be made. But at the other time, you know, now we're in year four. This is pretty much fully Narduzzi's team now. I mean, there's a few fifth-year seniors that weren't his recruits. That's, that's the other variable and, and in that, this. And, that, and that's, the, that, well, that's the other thing. I mean, now we're going to see if these guys that he, he has brought in over the last two or three years that maybe sat out mm -hmm. a redshirt yep. year like Paris Ford last year. Fit the system. The year off, if they fit the system and suddenly it looks good again, you know, that's may, it. maybe it's the, that's the issue. In so colleges, often. you're the coach and the GM. Mm -hmm. Win-loss prediction? You ready? Are we, I mean, our live cues on I'm the side. I'm not talking been... about Albany. I'm talking about, <laughs> I just, like, for the season. Well, with respect to Greg Gattu, so I'll give his Great Danes maybe a six and six year, you know, mm -hmm. in the CAA. But, uh, yeah, for Pitt, I've been pretty consistent sticking to, seven and five and in our live queues on the site and in other places i think you know they are going to be visibly better than last year however they're going up against a schedule that is not very well favorable. that's what i was going to say here the seven and five doesn't interest me nearly as much as, mm -hmm. as what you see them being in the acc because right. realistically what are we talking about with overall and, records and seven here? and five and who thing, cares beat albany 
even if you lose those three non-conference games, seven and five would be six and two in the ACC. Well, that's why it that sound, is, what you're saying sounds excessively optimistic to me. Based well, on what, what do you the, base that on? I base that on one: the schedule is favorable to them. They avoid, you know, the Clemson's, Louisville's on the other side. You that's know, their, true. Their crossover games are Syracuse and Wake, both winnable. I think. Although Clemson was winnable last year, <laughs> but I think the coastal their division is so wide open that whatever team plays well on a given day has a shot to win. Because I don't think, even though Miami's the favorite, I don't think even they're world, Miami's. Not. I don't think they're world beaters. No, they're, they're I, not I, gonna, Miami. I, don't, I haven't heard anybody say that Miami will be even as good as they were. They, they might last not be. They year. certainly have to get the quarterback situation handled. So, yeah. so yeah, that's. I think it's wide open for Pitt if they play well and take care of what they do. I think six and two is reasonable in the conference because the schedule stacks up for them. No Florida State, no Clemson. Sounds excessive, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Has there been any uptick in tickets sold? And I know Pitt fans hate when you talk about attendance, mm -hmm. but I'm sorry, it's it's a real thing. I mean, that 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 is what would get Pitt to the next no, level. And and. Over last year, there's definitely been an ups upswing. Of course, that's because Penn State on the schedule coming. It, to yeah, Penn. that's the so, natural. So really that's the, not even a shot. That's so, just a natural. So, re so really, the, the indicative measure, I think, is this year versus 2016, the last time Penn State came here. Right. And there, there is a slight uptick from there. I mean, they've said they are right at 50,000 season tickets sold, which includes the student section. But, you know, at 50,000, that's... Did you say that with a straight face? Well, it's... You it's, know they haven't sold 50,000 season tickets. It's, 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 <laughs> well, that, that's, what, that's what they're saying. You, you have to talk to uh, Heather Lyke and company if I you know. think they're fudging the numbers. Because it's not that. It's not that they fudge the numbers. What, mm -hmm. they, what they do is they say that, okay, you have to buy a season ticket package in order to get the Penn State game. Right. But what ends up happening is the rest of those tickets get basically bartered out. They get stub-hubbed. And then you yes. don't know how many of those actually remain on the market. Mm-hmm. Okay, whether it's secondary or primary, for the remaining games. So what ends up happening is that the place ends up looking awfully yellow right. for the actual conference games. And, and, to, and to Pitt's credit, what they've done this year, they finally introduced mobile ticketing for their games, which they never had in the past, which, you know, it's 2018. It's amazing that they haven't. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, it used to be Pitt tickets would come off StubHub three hours before the game right. because, because you couldn't do it. Right. Now they're hoping that it will be a good butts-in-the-seats right, measure yeah. to get people to walk up with their phone, get in so there. Including students. And, yeah, and, yeah, and especially students because, you know, that's, you know, roll out of bed for a 12.30 game in the afternoon. It's like, oh, maybe I will go down. Now that's really uh, available to them. And, you know, it, it is a perception thing, getting those people in the seats. Uh, you know, so just much having of this attendance even, thing. Even if it's just the lower bowl, to have that yellow gone yeah, from the television find screen. find a way. That, that's, uh, that's what that's I'm thinking. What they need to one go way for. or another is to fill that lower bowl, mm -hmm. uh, get the place feeling more invigorated, whatever else. You know what else they could do is close off the the... A lot of people don't know that the far end zone, the upper deck at Heinz Field, those are actually bleachers. They aren't right. seats. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of an optical illusion if you're not looking directly at it. Close that off. You know what I mean? Put some giant picture of mm -hmm. Dan Marino and Hugh Green up there or whatever uh, and, and, and just fence it off and just say, this is it. This is our, this is our atmosphere that we're going for here. What's wrong with that? I you know, I think it, it would work. I mean, it might just be a, a maintenance thing, not wanting to do that and then turn around with the Steeler game the next day, but who knows? It's a tar. I mean, they could pull it off, it, right? Sure, sure. It's probably easier than cleaning it. <laughs> that, that's true.